Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today we're going to do the top five perfumes for the month of April. So, dipping top little April showers. You know a little song from Bambi? Well, it kind of, you get the showers, but you don't get the showers. I mean, climate change is happening. Sometimes it's super dry in April. Sometimes, if you're lucky, you get a little bit of showers. I don't mind a bit of April showers. I feel, I, I think they're super refreshing. I kind of like the poetry and the melancholia that goes with it. So for me, having a bit of clouds, you know, a bit of sun, the rain, and then also sun, and then all nature full in bloom, the chlorophyll is at its peak. It's just amazing. And so I love to celebrate spring. And um, in April, actually, dur during the entire really, seasonality of spring. I love to celebrate it. I just think it's so beautiful how nature just keeps blooming more and more and more. And usually around April, it hits its chlorophyll peak. The green is at its greenest, uh, in, in the Northern Hemisphere at least. So, and then when it rains and you get those misty vibes and smells, well, that's when I wear Après Londe, and uh, yeah, it is a relatively new addition to my collection, and I have been using it quite a bit. It's the dry down for me with this one. You gotta wait till it hits the dry down. You got Oris, you got Iris Notes, you got Violet, you have a lot of powdery accords, which should be the Oris root. Um, you do have that difficult opening, to me difficult opening, of that kind of aldehyde, Fennel anise accord, which I'm not a big fan of, but then you do hit the vanilla. Very, very, very light smidge of Guerlinade, Guerlain vanilla in the dry down. And this is why also they decided to put that little purpley sticker here uh, for Après Londe for their legendary collection because of the violets and the iris. It is a purpley flower accord with that. Après Londe, meaning after the shower or after the rain or after the rainstorm, you can imagine how then that misty vibe will feel. It's very April to me. And I wait for the dry down with this one. So it's kind of an anticipation, really, because I'm not a big fan of the opening notes. It, it makes me fall in love with it later on as time progresses. It's so fascinating how, you know, I've been watching uh, Egyptian ancient Egypt uh, documentaries obsessed with, with Egypt in general. Uh, and uh, what, they, what the historians usually say is no matter who tried in the past, in the past four or 5,000 years to conquer Egypt, even though some cultures and armies, uh, people have succeeded to occupy Egypt, ultimately, it was Egypt's culture and deep, mesmerizing, attractive heritage and rituals and, and religion and beliefs and art that conquered and won over every single conqueror or occupant who tried to occupy Egypt. And that's what happens with Guerlain perfumes. You try to penetrate that fragrance realm of, of, of Guerlain fragrances, the, the, we're talking about the old school, old school ones, more so than the new ones. The new ones have a little bit less of that complexity. And then, you know, you think, okay, well, let me just take over with, with my own character, with my own identity or whoever I am. And then they kind of win you over instead. You can't really win over and occupy the territory of Guerlain. Guerlain always kind of ends up winning over you, and then you end up falling in love with its heritage. You fell, you end up falling in love with its own cultural representation, with its own rituals, with, with its own rich history and kind of structure and order in which things are done. So, strangely enough, I've started uh, lately comparing Guerlain fragrances visually to me for myself as kind of ancient Egyptian fragrances. Even though, of course, back in the day in ancient Egypt, they, uh, perfumes were very different from, from Guerlain, obviously. But 
if you're looking for complexity and 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 really thick woven patterns of of culture of of heritage of you know all forms of art of arts woven together i mean that you get that tapestry or that tweed pattern with gelan fragrances and that is also what what ancient egypt and egyptian culture is so it just makes these perfumes even more beautiful because it it just makes me you know envision even more the past and antiquities and i have it on today it's really really beautiful so great for april number 2 <laughs> so number 2 is uh, a very delicate fragrance and i think april is also a very delicate month because well it's not really hot yet but it's not it can be cold in the evenings and sometimes you just and because it's moody you know between rain and sun and you might have that vibe from time to time of just not wanting to be um, i don't know pushed around by people i'm not saying you want to be left alone but you need to be cradled and cuddled a little bit like you need to feel a sort of a safe space and oasis for yourself but you still want it to be fresh and you still want to be extrovert in a certain way because it is spring so nature is in bloom you want to be outdoors you also want to experience life blooming you want to experience planet earth regenerating itself in front of your very eyes and yet you want to feel safe while nature is doing its thing and i found that the perfume that does that for me uh, the best really uh, it's it's delicate but it also it, it it makes me feel cocooned and safe but it also has a zest in there uh the osmanthus and that osmanthus kind of gives me a kick to go into nature and but it makes me feel safe at the same time but fresh and that would be an alcohol free perfume <laughs> that would be cabriole by hermes look at this almost empty i do have backups <sighs> It's the classic Hermes Osmanthus accord. Like, you know, Guerlain has the Guerlinade. Hermes has their signature Osmanthus. And, oh man, I mean, this thing, well, let's layer it with Après Londe. Oh, beautiful. This also has a little bit after the rain vibes going for it. So delicious, so delicate. It's a perfume that was designed for kids, the first well, in recent years at least, uh, fragrance by Hermes for kids called Cabriole, and uh, it is perfume-free. They do state that it is for kids three years and up, also for grown-ups, <laughs> obviously. Um, you know, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's a legend, just my opinion. And while you're at it, subscribe to my channel. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Get access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon. Super Jacob spelled together on Patreon as well. And thumb up this video if you're enjoying it. Yeah, the Osmanthus. And it, it gives me such a beautiful, invigorating vibe. Very, very spring. But at the same time, safe cradled beautiful the quality of this perfume is just really very elevated super elegant i mean it's hermes at its finest i don't want to say that this is my favorite hermes perfume uh because i do have quite a few hermes fragrances that i love i love voyage d'hermes you know i, I love queer d'ange i love violet volinka poivre samarcand also really uh, one of those from the hermesance range that i love but Cabriol has a, and Cabriol, you can see also a little kid. Cabriol means several things. Cabriol means to, to do those kind of cartwheels, you know, with your body as a kid. But also Cabriol can mean to be mischievous. Like little kids can be a little mischievous. So there's beautiful drawings made to go with this perfume of a little kid and the Hermes horse. Uh, the kid is, is driving, <laughs> is riding Hermie, the horse. And, uh, you know. And they have like diff several different adventures together. It is such a beauty. It comes in a little pouch as well. By the way, hashtag not sponsored. I bought all these perfumes. Just to let you know. Man, oh man. Uh, this thing is just... I love it. Two bits. Cabriol by Hermes.
what a beauty. Mm. If you can get your hands on it, try it out. Uh, it's a soft, soft, simple structure that Osmanthus is divine, really. Very hard to find a better one out there. And uh, makes you feel great in April. Beautiful for the temperature as well. It's just perfection. Number three is going in a slightly different direction for those very sunny days. April can also be weirdly hot. You kind of go out in the morning, you go to work and, you know, you're all dressed up because it's kind of gray weather outside, wind is blowing. You put on a coat, maybe sometimes even still a scarf. But then like the sun comes out, you know, 2 p.m. and uh, the clouds are all gone and it's really hot all of a sudden. And then you feel those vibes of like, hey, summer is around the corner. Well, for that type of April day, I adore going into gardenia, jasmine, musky amber accords. And that would be an unfortunately discontinued fragrance, but I love it to bits. Fleur Burlesque, the Burlesque Flower by Wilhelm Parfumerie. Uh, Pierre Dinan designed the bottle. So it is uh, a beautiful bottle and it is a gorgeous perfume. I did stock up on this one, so we'll go, we'll go, as they say. I'm fine with, I uh, <laughs> have a lifetime supply of Fleur Burlesque. This is a 100 ml bottle. It's so beautiful how kind of flat it is. And this kind of whole burlesque vibe, it's also giving me very much Hollywood in April. April Hollywood vibes. Do I want to cover? Yeah, let's, let's just spritz it on top of everything else. Oh, man. So this is also, to me, like a modern version of uh, Giorgio Beverly Hills, another fragrance that I adore. My mom's favorite, by the way. Oh, this is so beautiful. And it ages so lusciously. It's a buttery, ambrosial, deep. Mm. My mouth waters. Um, the ilang ilang in here is what gives it that butter accord. And... It just makes you feel happy, you know? So you maybe go out in the morning and the weather's kind of meh, and then the sun comes out and everything starts popping, and then you spray this and it gives you that joy and that happiness. It really is joy in a bottle. Sunshine in a bottle, beautiful perfume. I mean, Fleur Burlesque, you guys, it's so underrated. I, you know, from from the niches out there, you know, I have my beef with niche because, you know, very often a lot of these niche brands, they, they charge you really a kidney and a leg. Um, and quality of the ingredients is mostly, you know, we'll go, we'll go. It's very much become a joke. Uh, certain smells are just hideous and the the prices are just not warranted. I, I think it's more like an idea of saying like, this is niche, so it has to cost a lot. Instead of thinking, this is niche, let me try to not damage the environment too much. So I'm going to produce a small amount of perfume, but I really want the highest quality of ingredients in it. Hence the higher price is warranted because otherwise, I mean, it's, it's not lucrative at all to make a to go into the business of perfumes otherwise. Uh, but um, that's the problem. A lot of the times when I smell niche, I don't smell quality, you know? Some of them are like experimental and the niche, you know, perfumers just go all cuckoo crazy on, oh, let me deliver some aggressive conceptual smell. And then the description of the perfume is like, all over the place and like I'm like girl <laughs> learn to edit yourself tone it down like you're trying to put way too much into a concept without really thinking about the structure and the substance of what you're actually delivering to your clients so you're you have this great idea but you're not really capable of transforming it into a great smell and this is what I think happens a lot to niche lately just my opinion obviously everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Not rooted in truths or facts, everything's a legend, just my opinion. Here's a mass-released perfume as my number four for April. I'm really happy with this list this month. I'm enjoying the rotation of these. Like, I even go through all five of them throughout the day, you know, depending on what mood I'm in. So, Après Londe is more beautiful towards sunset. 
Cabriol, perfect in the morning, uh, Fleur Burlesque, afternoon. And then there's this perfume that uh, was released in the 2010s, but uh, mass release, but still, to me, has niche quality in a good way, not in a bad way. Not the, not, not the niche that I just described prior, but an example of a mass release perfume that has that kind of niche vibe about it gorgeous in April. Uh, I think, again, because of the wetness that April can bring with itself, and I'm envisioning this perfume at the moment very much in some kind of mountainy landscape, like mm, at, at the sea or at the ocean, one of those sleepy cities that have a little tiny port, and they got mountains running right you know, off the beach, you got those mountains and it's very dramatic. But then the outlook of the people, of the inhabitants is on one side, when you turn around, you see the mountains. And on the other side, you have this endless uh, view of, of the sea or of the ocean. And you have that beautiful mist and fog happening throughout April. And it's just very nostalgic. It's kind of almost... It kind of almost gives me the vibes of the first episode of Twin Peaks season one where Laura Palmer is found wrapped in plastic. Now, there's no sea there, right? It's a river. She's found on a river. But that's the misty vibe of kind of a forest being close to water. Uh, but it also gives me a little bit uh, Twilight, the first movie. Uh, that type of vibe, wetness, humidity, very romantic, right? So there's a fishy accord, fig accord, fig bark, and fig leaf, and a little bit of fishy caviar. If you didn't guess it, I'm going to tell you what it is. My number four is Thierry Mugler's Womanity. Uh, I adore this perfume. This is such a beauty uh, with all of the facets of fig in this gorgeous alien-like bottle, right, with the stopper being a ring so I always kind of say you know when I apply the perfume I always put the ring on my finger and then I and then you spray it it's intense <laughs> so you got to be careful with womanity because you will get a salty that's the caviar vibe that saltiness in it it's a salty accord with fig 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 fruit fig leaf and the fig wood. It is one of my favorite Mugler's from their mass released, uh, you know, fragrances. So, Womanity, uh, Amen, and Mugler Cologne are my three favorite Mugler perfumes. But so, Womanity. Look at this gorgeous face, very alien, like very H.R. Giger design, isn't it? So you get all of those figs and they create this wetness, this damp landscape in April that reminds me very much of a, of a kind of a sleepy town on a river or on a lake or at the, at the sea, at the ocean. And dreamy, slow, introvert, introspective but getting kind of in tune with your own emotions, preparing yourself for the rest of the year. It's, it's a beauty. And I love this kind of pinky, purpley liquid juice. It kind of matches makeup and the shirt. Gorgeous. Really, really, really. Womanity. Spiritual, isn't it? Like a witch. These kind of noises. The chain. Uh, beautiful for April. And my number five is a spiritual awakening. You know, as nature kind of blooms and blossoms, uh, we hit um, a very, I want to say, uh, how to put it, a very meditative. Yeah, that's the thing. Meditation. You, you almost go into a meditative state. And I'm not saying like you just zone out completely when you're at work or at school, although it does happen as well. I mean, if you're sitting in front of your computer and you're just like one point like, uh, you know, for like a minute you're gone and then you're back again. It happens to everyone. Uh, but I'm also talking about really taking the time to focus on 
kind of spirituality. And I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking more about being in tune with yourself and nature. As nature is blooming all around you, you need some form of connection. You need something that will link you to whatever is happening around, happening around you. This entire life blooming around you sometimes makes you almost feel like you're an outsider, like you're not a part of it. It makes you feel a little bit excluded. So sometimes a good perfume can help you because it, it functions as a link between you and nature, believe it or not, even though it's a synthetic artificial thing created by men, still the right perfume at the right time can give you such a beautiful bridge. It can kind of bridge you with nature. And to me, that fragrance in April is most definitely, there it is, the incense series from Comte des Garçons, Jassalmer. I adore Jassalmer. Jassalmer is also my favorite of the five. I also love Avignon. I love Zagorsk. I love Kyoto. Uh, Orzazate as well. I love all of them, but Jassalmer has a special place in my heart. So, incense, incense, incense. This is a beautiful, sweet incense accord. Mm, let's add it on top of the... You know what? Oh, yeah. Mm-mm. It's a spicy incense. Oh man, I, I just smile when I, this thing is so happy. It's, it makes me really, really happy to, to wear Jassalmer. It, it just, um, it makes you happy to be alive and it makes you kind of analyze life and from a very positive perspective and it bridges me to a more spiritual side of nature and it just kind of allows me to to contemplate the beauty of nature without you know sometimes you contemplate nature and you think oh it's soon it's going to be over summer is going to come the leaves are going to burn out and then as fall comes everything's going to die off and it's oh you know the cycle is that the, the cycle just kind of keeps coming and going and it's like you know everything is going to perish well before that thought kicks in and that does kick in in summer for me uh this one there's none of that in, in the thought process connected to Jassalmer. Jassalmer bridges me with nature only in the best of positive growth ways. Like it, it makes me see the beauty of nature as something that continuously grows, expands, gives more and more life, blooms more and more. It just, it optimism. Full-blown optimism and hope in a bottle. Jassalmer, really gorgeous. And another little purpley-pink moment to match the shirt and the and the makeup. Wow, look at that. I didn't even notice this when I was selling Look at all these, like, little purple-pink hues. Look, they, they even the bottles with the colors match, not just, like, sm smell-wise. And then we got these little two zestier versions. A little bit of orange going on there with black. And then the gorgeous sunshine yellow in a bottle. So those will be my top five fragrances for the month of April. I adore them. Let me know uh, what your favorites are for April. If you enjoy any one of these, uh, let me know down below in the comment section down below. And uh, until next time, never forget to never give up on fragrant love. Subscribe, thumb up the video. See you soon. Happy spring.